Thank you for the introduction, Bill. Um, well, I might as well uh, state it up front that I'm not going to have the answer to some of the big questions that were raised this morning. Um, I'm just going to give you my perspective on the state of affairs of wireless development <coughs> and wireless systems, uh, more from a global perspective, uh, and uh, how we got to where we are and uh, where, we, where I think we're going to head uh, in the next uh, few years. What, what I think one, one of the themes that is shaping up to uh, is happening in the wireless arena is really the convergence of consumer electronics and cell phones. Cell phones are really becoming the center of the universe uh, for uh, consumer electronics and the device that we always bring uh, with us. So here is the, a picture that depicts many of the things that are being introduced into cell phones, uh, some of them more useful than others, I have to admit. And, um, but, but they are, they are happening, um, and really the, the cell phone is becoming uh, the, the, the center the, uh, of the consumer electronics. So how, how did that happen? It was enabled by a few main factors, in my, in my opinion. One, definitely device integration uh, due to Moore's law. Uh, data connectivity, wide area data connectivity, uh, extremely important, and that has come about with the deployment of the 3G networks. 2G networks really brought low-speed data and voice. 3G networks now bring not only voice, but uh, high-speed data connectivity as well. Uh, the increasing level of application developments uh, for cell phones, uh, platforms, and spectrum availability, an extremely important thing that we tend to forget. Uh, in order for wireless services to be deployed and be successful, we need to have uh, spectrum available. So I just wanted to give you a sense of the first part, which is, was the device integration and how, how far we have come in the past 10 years. So this is an, just an example of uh, uh, th this particular example is the comparison of two uh, chips on the left, uh, one for that we produced in 1994 and uh, on the right in 2004, so 10 years apart, and it's specifically for a, a modem that resides on the network side. So this is not a modem that resides on, on the phone. Just pick this particular example. And you can see it took one million transistors and a size of about 100 millimeter squares to support one voice channel in 1994. And 10 years later, uh, close to 10 million transistors, a factor of 200 improvement with, in a single device, 200 simultaneous voice channels could be carried through that device. So that's the device integration that I was uh, mentioning before that allows to do this. This is another chart of what has happened over the years, and you can see, again, ref referencing to what I was stating before, uh, started in 1991. It took five chips to do one phone call on the network side. Uh, then one chip in 1994, and the progression continues uh, on, the, on that path. And it's a factor of 10,000 over uh, roughly 15 years. Now, in the chips that goes into the phones, uh, which at the beginning were really only supporting phone calls, so were basically a telecommunication modem, uh, there is much more now that goes into a, a chip that goes into the phone. And this is a chart that represents the, the change that, is, that has happened over the years, over the past six years in this particular example, where the size, everything has been scaled to 90 nanometers. Obviously, throughout the years, there's been a transition of process technology. And it shows the percentage of silicon that is dedicated to the telecommunication function, to the transport of uh, bits, and the, and the uh, percentage of area in the silicon that is dedicated to known telecommunication function. As you can see, that area becomes more and more important as we, we go forward because the integration of other functions into the phone, uh, it's happening. And that is allowed by the introduction of very powerful microprocessors, very low power and powerful mic microprocessor into the mobile devices, uh, digital signal processor and uh, video, audio, imaging, 3D graphics, GPS functions uh, integrated into a single device. And things are not going to sit still. Um, this is, a, again, a chart that shows how it's going to move forward. Uh, this is a particular um, 
powerful CPU core for mobile applications that we have been developing. Uh, it's a one gigahertz uh, CPU that will be into a uh, design into the chips that go into the into the mobile phones, and it's a very low power, low leakage in 65 nanometers process, and it's up to one gigahertz uh, performance at 240 milliwatts. Once you have that kind of CPU and that kind of power consumption in the mobile device, you can imagine the number of applications and functions that that device can do. And that delivers uh, roughly 16 times the performance of older generations of uh, microprocessors for mobile devices. So if you compare where we are today on mobile devices and where PCs where it's basically a 10-year delta in, ter in terms of uh, performance. Uh, this compares desktop PCs of the late 90s with the most recent, or actually this year, uh, last year, uh, mobile devices in terms of this particular one in terms of uh, processor power. So there is 15 years roughly delta in terms of performance of mobile devices versus desktop PCs in terms of CPU. In terms of memory uh, and storage, it, again, another 15 years delta. Toshiba just released a 0.85 inch uh, hard disk drive for mobile devices, a four gigab gigabyte hard drive, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, this is a chart that shows what is happening with the cameras embedded in phones. Uh, Samsung just released a 10 megapixel uh, camera phone uh, just recently. And, uh, and that compares to uh, two years, roughly, delta between uh, cameras, uh, digital cameras. So again, this shows that the convergence of all, that, uh, consumer, all those consumer electronics functions into uh, a cell phone. And this one shows the uh, graphics capabilities. This should have started, but maybe it will start if I push the button one more time. Okay, it didn't start. There was some animation, but this was supposed to start uh, to show the difference in uh, 3D graphics between a phone of last year to the left, a phone of this year in the middle, and a phone that will come out uh, next year. And again, the, the 3D graphics, unfortunately, is not moving. I'm not sure why. Um, that the, the 3D graphics capability now built into the phones are uh, incredible in comparison to what we could do only two years ago. The second portion was now the data connectivity uh, that is available to the mobile devices, which wasn't available in, in first generation systems, which were basically only voice, it was barely available in second generation system, which couldn't allow successful services really to be deployed, and is now available in uh, third generation systems. And, uh, and that is the data connectivity part. That has come about because we made an, an enormous progress in getting the efficiency of the systems uh, to the point where it becomes very economical, very effective uh, to deploy this, uh, this voice, voice services and data services in a limited amount of spectrum that is available to wireless uh, services. So this compares over 1984 to 2007 in terms of voice capacity per normalized per megahertz of spectrum, a factor of roughly 50 improvements in efficiency. So over the course of 20-plus uh, years, uh, we have improved the efficiency now of voice transmissions by a factor of 50, which is not trivial. Uh, for data, similar improvements over a shorter period of time, obviously, both in terms of peak data rates on the left, from very low data rates of the first 2G systems to now very uh, interesting peak data rates for 3G systems and in terms of average throughput, data throughput per uh, megahertz of spectrum shown in the right, uh, again, a factor of three roughly between the very first second generation systems and the uh, or 2.5 uh, generation system and, uh, and the new systems. The availability now of data connectivity at a reasonable speed and performance, coupled with the wide area network coverage provided by third generation networks has led now to uh, most companies uh, that produce laptops to embed the 
third generation devices into the laptop. So instead of having to buy a PC card to put into the laptop, now the laptop comes equipped not only with Wi-Fi, which has been the case for quite a few years, but now comes equi equipped with a 3G uh, modem embedded inside with integrated antennas in the laptop. And several models have been introduced uh, recently. Thank you. And uh, this is an example. So that, again, now we have wide area coverage, not only local area coverage through Wi-Fi. Just a snapshot of where third generation systems are at. Uh, they have been deployed worldwide. There's about 200 uh, commercial third generation uh, networks around in 80, 84 countries. And this is numbers are rather astonishing. Uh, there's a prediction that by 2010, in about uh, four, three and a half years, uh, almost 60% of the global devices will be third generation uh, capable devices. And that is uh, a large number, 600 million devices a year will be shipped with 3G uh, capabilities. The, this is a nap, snapshot of what the growth will be. Uh, roughly 40% of all worldwide subscribers will be third generation by 2010. The worldwide subscribers are predicted to be about 3 billion by 2010. And out of those 3 billions, 400 millions will be in India. If this projection uh, happens to be correct, then we'll have about 400 millions in India. And to conclude, just uh, another point that I made at the beginning, the fact that uh, now these devices have all these capabilities and there are different, uh, what we call different communication uh, capabilities that relate to different functions that the device is doing. Uh, on the left, we have broadband wide area connectivity uh, through the third generation systems, uh, TV to the phone through multicast and broadcast uh, to the phone, and then different uh, air links, GPS for location services, Wi-Fi for local air connection, high-speed local air connections, Bluetooth for cordless connections. They're all integrated in the same device. So each air link for a specific function. And this, this was an example. I didn't make this slide. I'm not that good at making these slides. Um, but uh, this is an example, basically, of what, what happens with all these different air links. Uh, integrated and, you, and simultaneously working into the phone. Where you have voice over IP now on the packet data network uh, with a Bluetooth connection to the headset. And then you have uh, voice and data simultaneously, both on IP networks. And then you add a GPS connection simultaneously to get the location on the device. And then you watch a little TV, and then you have a local connection with Wi-Fi to transport high-speed um, data, for instance, to and video to a, a, a local uh, uh, display. All of this would not happen unless there is a good business case and operators are making money, cellular operators are making money. And this shows that, indeed, that is the case. It's just the beginning of uh, data revenues for operators. Most of the revenues up to a few years ago was just voice, uh, based on voice. But finally, with the advent of third generation networks and the growth of third generation networks, uh, data revenue are starting to show up to show up on the balance sheets of operators, and the growth is substantial. The difference that 3G data connectivity is making to operators around the world is becoming a big factor, and the investments in those networks will continue to increase based on, on, on this results and this performance. So the services are happening, and operators are, are becoming, uh, <coughs> start, sorry, are starting to make money, and, uh, and the growth will continue. Um, what I think it's, it's happening is this open up, opens up a lot of opportunities, and especially a lot of opportunities in the development of applications for the cell phone. Again, the cell phone will be a the center of the universe, in a sense, and there is an awful lot of opportunities for application de development, for new ideas on services, and uh, all the pieces are there. And it's just a matter of uh, uh, continuing to work uh, along those lines. With that, I think my time is definitely up. And with that, thank you very much.